Hey everybody, my name is Kason Crane, and I'm here today to talk to you guys for a couple minutes about the wandering that I've been doing over the past two years. This wandering has taken me to some of my lowest lows and really some of my highest highs, and I'm really excited to be sharing my story with you guys today. My story starts when I was, when I was born, really. I grew up as a young gay kid. This is a picture of me in seventh grade, and as you can see, I was pretty flamboyant. Um, I still am, but I've kind of toned it down for you guys today. And I will say, it was Mardi Gras, so that explains the beads. I didn't wear beads every day. It was a special occasion. But I grew up in Princeton, New Jersey, a very, very accepting, liberal, very welcoming community. And even though I grew up in that awesome community, I still experienced name-calling, bullying, harassment because of my being gay. And it just made me think, from a young age, well, if this is what I'm experiencing in Princeton, what are other people experiencing in less accepting communities? So those foundational experiences were really important, shaping my worldview. And then I went away to boarding school for high school. I went to Choate. It was a really awesome experience. And a couple years in, uh, or I, in my time there, I met a really great girl named Charlotte. She was one of my good friends. She was energetic. She was bright. She was beautiful. She was smart. She was an amazing person, one of the most amazing people I ever met, and she just, she touched so many people. And then in my junior year, she committed suicide, and it was devastating. It was devastating for me and for her other friends and for her family especially. It was devastating for everyone, anyone who had ever met her, because she was such an incredible person. And to think that her light was no longer shining in this world was just such a devastating thought. And so from that day, I knew, okay, I cannot let young people kill themselves. I need to do something to make it so that young people aren't thinking about or attempting suicide. And I did some research, and I discovered that suicide is the third leading cause of death for kids aged 10 to 24, and that just shocked me. And furthermore, in the lesbian, gay, and bisexual community, kids are four to eight times more likely to attempt suicide. So a couple months later, when Tyler Clementi, who was a young gay kid at Rutgers, a fellow New Jerseyan like me, when he committed suicide because of bullying because of his sexuality, I wasn't surprised, but I was really, really sad. I felt like I identified with Tyler, being gay, being a New Jerseyan, you know, he was just two years older than me, and I knew that I couldn't let one more day pass. I needed to start now, I needed to do something. So I did some more research and I found an organization called The Trevor Project. And The Trevor Project was, seemed like a really fantastic organization. It is a really fantastic organization. It's a suicide lifeline for LGBTQ youth. It's 24-7 and free and confidential. I thought, well, this is a great organization. I want to volunteer for this organization. I want to make a difference. So I gave them the call and I was like, hey guys, my name's Kason, I'm 17 years old, I'm young and energetic, and I can lift heavy things, tell me, give me a task, you know, give me something to do. I want to help because I'm really passionate about this issue. And they said, Kaysen, we appreciate your enthusiasm, but unfortunately, you can't volunteer for us. And I was shocked. Well, why not, I asked. And they said, well, look, you know, Kaysen, as you know, we deal with a very sensitive issue, and you have to be 18 to volunteer for us. It's just, it's, just the, you know, it's just the liability thing. And I said, okay, well, that, that makes sense. <laughs> I understand. I'll give you that. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't, you know, I, I experienced a setback, but I wasn't, I wasn't content to just let other people, let the people at the Trevor Project do their work. I really wanted to make a difference. So I thought, well, this gives me an opportunity to uniquely contribute, to try and find a way to combine my unique passions and give back and still make a difference. So a couple months later, I was climbing, uh, climbing mountains, a favorite uh, pastime of mine, and I realized, what if I could combine my passion for mountain climbing with my desire to give back on this issue? And so I started the Rainbow Summits Project, whereby I would climb the seven summits, which is basically mountaineering's equivalent of like a Grand Slam tennis tournament or the Super Bowl. It's, it's like a big task that a lot of people attempt. Uh, it's the highest mountain on each continent. So I could attempt the seven summits as, uh, as a way to raise money and awareness for the Trevor Project and use that as my platform. So I started out, and to be honest, it all started pretty well. I knocked off Kilimanjaro, highest mountain in Africa, knocked off Aconcagua, highest mountain in South America, and Mount Elbrus, the highest mountain in Europe. So I'd done three of the seven, so I was on a roll. And then I went up to attempt North America's highest peak, Mount McKinley. 
incredible mountain. I mean, as you can see, this is, this is why we climb. It's just so beautiful, and just this, the majestic mountains in Alaska, really, really incredible. But a lot of people consider McKinley to be one of the hardest of the seven summits, because not only is it really physically draining, you're carrying a lot on your back, but also the weather is really, really unpredictable. So we got up, and after a month on the mountain, we made it up to high camp, 17,200 feet, and we experienced this. Not ideal. <laughs> the weather was horrible. It wasn't like, oh, how are we going to get up to the summit in this weather? It was like, how are we going to get down to base camp safely uh, in this weather? And so after five days of enduring that in our tents up at high camp, we managed to sneak down in a break in the weather and make it down safely to base camp. And so I got off the mountain, and I didn't summit. And it was the first time that I had attempted a mountain and not summited it. And I called my parents to let them know I was safe. And I was like, guys, <laughs> I don't know what to do. You know, I was crushed. I had set out with this goal, and I had not accomplished it. And, you know, so I didn't know whether I was going to be able to continue the project or, you know, whether I was going to even be able to keep climbing the seven summits because I'd experienced the setback. And so I kept, I, I went to a school, and I, I was giving talks during this whole project. So I went to a school, and I talked to them about suicide prevention, and... And then a kid came up to me after, and he said, Kaysen, you know, I think what you're doing is really incredible. And then he shared a story with me about how every day he goes to school and he gets bullied. But he's openly gay. He's a runner on the cross-country team. He's openly gay anyway, because he feels like that's the right thing to do. And he had so much courage. I just, I was so inspired by him that I thought, okay, if I'm inspiring this kid, I can't give up now. And so I learned a really important lesson. I learned that I needed to readjust my definition of success. That success wasn't getting to the highest point necessarily on every mountain. It was getting as far as I could get if I'd given it my all. So I kept going, and I went down to Indonesia to climb Karsten's Pyramid, which was another crazy, crazy mountain. <laughs> it was a week of trekking, trekking not like anything I've ever done. You can see this is a raging river, and that's a wet log that we're <laughs> like sidestepping across. Uh, and then you get up, you, you, know, you go up in altitude, and you get to the mountain. And it's basically... It's a big rock face, and it might look like this rock face is vertical, because it is. And uh, it's pretty daunting, um, especially because, and you guys, I, you guys are not going to believe me when I say this, but <laughs> I'm terrified of heights. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> scared of heights. Um, so in order to, uh, to climb this peak, you have to traverse that ridge, and you, know, you might not be able to recognize base camp, but I can see it in this video. You can literally see several thousand feet down all the way to the base of the mountain. And, uh, and so I experienced my second really big setback, which was how am I going to get down? How am I going to climb this mountain safely, considering that I'm terrified of heights? And I discovered that just by simply looking at my feet, by really focusing on literally one step and then the next step, I was able to keep going and I was able to make it all the way down. And I realized that that strategy that you know, by breaking down this seemingly insurmountable obstacle into smaller pieces allowed me to accomplish something that I never thought I could accomplish. And that was a really important strategy because that's applicable in all aspects of life. And uh, so that was a really great realization. And then I went back and I trained a bit. I kept talking and I kept, <laughs> I kept talking to people about suicide prevention. I, I was uh, inspiring them while they were inspiring me. And then eventually I made it to Mount Everest last spring. And Everest was a serious challenge. As you know, it's the highest mountain in the world, and it's, no, one, no one comes off Everest and says it was easy. It's a two-month-long expedition, and that is really the biggest part of the challenge, because you're away from friends, you're away from family, you're away from greenery for two months. And that's a long time to not see a single leaf, I'll tell you what. Some people brought sticks with them just because they were brown, and that was close to green. Um, so I started this expedition, and uh, it's an incredible mountain. This is uh, a picture of the Kumbu Ice Fall, the most dangerous part of the, of the, of the whole mountain. It's, it's basically a waterfall of ice that's constantly moving, so you need to like, be very, very quick through that section because you know, waterfalls are moving, and this <laughs> this chunk of ice could dislodge and fall on you. So it has its own challenges, but I also made some mistakes. This is one example of a mistake I made, uh, not taking good enough care of my feet. Uh, but it was an incredible experience, and eventually 
with my team, with the help of my team, I made it up the Lhotse face and then up on summit day to the summit of Mount Everest. Uh, and I brought the rainbow flag up. And to my knowledge, to anyone that I've talked to his knowledge, it was the first time that rainbow flag had been brought up to the summit of Everest. And it was an incredible, incredible moment for me because it was a fulfillment of a personal dream of mine, you know, to climb Everest. I'd, I'd dreamed of climbing Everest ever since I was two. Uh, to actually be up there, I mean, I couldn't stop crying, to be honest. And then it was also an incredible moment because I wasn't alone. Not only did I have my team, but I also brought with me prayer flags, traditional Tibetan prayer flags. You can see some in the, in the right-hand corner of this picture that were dedicated to the memory of young kids who had committed suicide. And it was really important for me to share, that, share this journey with them. And it was just, it was such a moving moment for me. And then eventually I, I got off the mountain safely and I, I, I called my parents and <laughs> told them I was safe and then headed straight off to Alaska and I gave McKinley another go. And luckily the second time I was able to make it to the top and in the process become the first openly gay person and the fifth youngest person ever to climb the seven summits. And that was incredible. It was a really, really amazing experience to accomplish this goal, to work so hard and not think that I could do it and then to achieve it in the end. But what was more important for me were the hundreds of kids that I talked to, the thousands and thousands of dollars I raised for the Trevor Project because those are the people that are really courageous. And the real impact I made was not climbing these mountains. That was a personal, that was a personal thing, and it was great, I'm very lucky. But the real impact I've had is in dealing with those people. And so my takeaway from these wanderings is that I would encourage all of you guys to push yourselves to try to combine things that you might not think you should combine. It might sound totally crazy, but try and be creative. Think outside the, the, tr think outside the box and try and find a way to give back in a unique way that leverages your unique, your unique talents and skills in a way that allows the world to become a better place. I go to Princeton now, and I have a friend who started a cafe. She's an amazing cook, and all the proceeds go to a charity in South America. And that's just one example of many uh, of people who are pursuing their passions and also giving back. And so I'd encourage you guys, as you know, I'm saying here today, we're thinking about wandering, to wander. Wander in your mind, wander in life, wander around the world if you can, but always think about how you can give back. So to close, I want to share a final story with you guys. When I was first climbing, when I first came up with this idea, it was actually, I was in New Zealand, and it was, it was spectacular. I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, so it was really, you know, it was <laughs> the best month of my life. Um, felt like I was reliving it every second. And, <laughs> and I was in these mountains, the Misty Mountains, um, or where that was filmed anyway. And I was climbing with this incredible woman named Lydia Brady. She was the first woman to climb Everest without supplemental oxygen back in 89. Really, really, she was my coach. She was an incredible climber. She's like, Casey, you know, do you like climbing? I was like, Lydia, I love it. She's like, well, let me ask you something. When are you gonna climb Everest? So my, I was like, Lydia, I can't climb Everest? And she's like, Casey, yeah, of course you can. And that is what started this whole thing. So my question to you guys is, What's your Everest? Thank you.